Just kidding. <laughs> Love the guy. Um, all right, well, let's jump in. I'm, I gotta say I'm really humbled to be here and given this opportunity. Uh, I was really surprised when uh, I got the, the email um, and heard about Catalyst. I'd never heard of it before. Uh, it was, it's really an incredible thing. I mean, these, I know a lot of these Blue Key members are really doing a lot of impressive stuff and the fact that they are gonna, you know, Steph's gonna wake up at 8.30 to, to talk to you about her wisdom every, every Thursday morning is a big deal, so. Um, I hope you guys all appreciate that. Thank you for coming out. I heard this isn't mandatory, so uh, I appreciate you coming to see me. Um, well, I uh, I am only a senior in college or fifth year. I'm a master's grad student, whatever you want to say. Um, so I I have a lot of self development to do still. So I uh, I'm going to try to uh, kind of give you my story of college and tell you about how. And I went about things, and I'll, I'll tell you that I'm very lucky to kind of reflect back and know, or you know, have a feeling that I really wouldn't change much, which um, is something I want to say after I close the chapter of any part of my life. So I'm going to try to give you, if I can give you anything, just a little snippet to maybe put you on that path, because uh, you guys are all freshmen now, and um, you know, when you graduate, I hope you can say the same thing. Uh, so a little background. Um, I grew up around this place. Uh, parents met here. Um, siblings go here. Got one in the crowd. Um, I, aunts and uncles, uh, everything like that. So I've been coming up here my entire life. This is actually where I, I sat for, I don't know, God knows how many years, 16 years, whatever it be. Um, and so this place is home to me. I, I really mean that. Like, you guys are family to me. When we say family on the football team, we mean everybody, we mean you, we mean professors, we mean the entire state of Kansas, but especially you. And to get the opportunity to speak to the best and brightest of the youth of my family is a big deal to me. You know, So thank you for being here, and um, I feel very lucky. Um, so we're going we're gonna to kick it off, I guess. Uh, you know, you, everyone's telling you that you're in college, you know, it's quote unquote the best time of your life, you know, and I, I say that, you know, I want you to take that with a grain of salt because I hope retrospectively you don't think that, I, I hope, but I hope today you think that. I hope moving forward every day you think, man, this is the best day of my life, this is the best time of my life. And so, you know, everyone's telling you, you got to get involved, you got to do all these things, and I'm completely on board with that. You know, you've all heard about how you got to get in the quest, and you're doing Catalyst, and you got to do SGA, you know, SAB, Student Foundation, K-State Proud, your sorority, your fraternity, your church, <clears throat> your academic fraternities, and you know, all these departments and service organizations, and it's going to probably get a little overwhelming fast. And, you know, I'm telling you this now, you guys are a semester and a half, and you guys are vets, right? You know, college, this makes it easy, right? <laughs> so, um, I guess that first point was more towards an incoming freshman, but if, raise your hand, because now since you guys are all vets, you're experienced. Tell me if your first semester has been busy. If you would describe your first semester as busy, raise your hand. Oh, about 80%. Buell? <coughs> yes. Buell's been busy. Under Coach Weber. I coach her in real teams. Um, but, you know, a lesson I learned pretty quick, um, from one of my dad's buddies, he said, everyone's busy. And what does that mean? That means being busy is relative. It's a relative term. My busy is different than your busy, but we're both busy. That makes sense? So, you know, I've got the, I've got the roommate, we've all got the roommate, who uh, watches four hours of Netflix a day, but just can't quite seem to find enough hours in the day to do their homework, you know? And, man, they're busy, you know? <laughs> And so, we all have to understand that <coughs> there's really more hours in the day than you think. And I am someone who did not realize this until I got here. And it was somewhat of a forced realization because, you know, if I'm going to describe how I was in high school, I, uh, I was a good student. I worked hard. I, I really, uh, in general, just care about sports. Uh, I mean, I, I, I tried really hard at school, but it was more like, well, eh, you know, if I don't get 
hey, okay, whatever. But I mean, I don't have change, but so let's say sports is my thing. <laughs> the old stags. Uh, football state champions, basketball state champions this year. Girls basketball on a 50 and 0 winning streak. Anyways, I was like the fifth man on the basketball team. Um, Coach Z yelled at me if I shot. He was like, no, 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 don't shoot. <laughs> you know, I knew I was getting benched if I shot the ball and it didn't go in. Anyway, every day, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd get up, I'd go to school, focus, go to practice, focus, be a team leader, work my very hardest, and then I'd go home and I would play Xbox for four hours. You know, you know, I was like, man, I'm busy. And man, you know, I, I, just, I need that four hours of Xbox to relax. So that's, that's, that's important. That's staying in my day or whatever. But and so I had come to the conclusion that I was doing everything in my power to be my best at what I cared about. And what I cared about was sports. And the only thing hindering me was that I was six foot white and couldn't run under a five flat 40. So <laughs> there's my logic, right? And um, I soon learned that my logic was flawed. And that was when I met Coach Snyder. Uh, I arrived at K-State and I got an opportunity to walk on. There's me with the big 3-0. Oh yeah, changed my number to 12, but they gave me 30. And that's me, I'm just a little bitty guy there. But uh, that's my freshman year. And you arrive and they pretty much map your day out. Let's put it that way. I'll give you a little taste of what my first semester was like. I'd wake up at 5.30, I'd have a, a lift at 6 a.m to about 7.15, I had a class from 7.30 to 10.20. I eat lunch at 10.30 a.m. I have class again at 11.30. I had meetings would start at two, so I'd get a little break in there from like 12.20 to two. And that, was, that was really nice. But from two to four, I'd have meetings from four to 7.30, we'd have practice. From eight to 10, we'd have mandatory study hall hours. From, and then at 10.30, I'd get to eat dinner. And I'll tell you what, who's had a late break before? Couple of you. Oh man. Back in the day our cook gave us like a scoop of fajita casserole. And it would be like on a plate with a, with a piece of foil over it. You open it up and go, oh fajita casserole again. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> All the restaurants are closed. Guess I'm getting one of these. <laughs> so I would eat from ten thirty to ten thirty. I'd wait twelve hours to eat. No wonder I weighed 170 pounds. Um, but the fact was, I was in the middle of the most rigorous time of my life. I, I, I mean, the semesters have lightened up since then. You said, but man, that first semester was nuts, you know? But um, Coach Snyder did something that was so great for us. He forced us to fill out a timesheet, a time management sheet, he'd say. You gotta turn these in to me. I, I think he read every one. I don't know, he doesn't sleep. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, I'd fill out my sheet to the hour, and um, it was amazing what that did. Um, because after practice and meetings and class, there, there was like no discretionary time left, but he would emphasize that we needed to schedule time to relax. And we're all looking at him like, Coach, we're trying to sleep six hours tonight, you know? How are you gonna relax? Anyway. Um, but he he would emphasize it needed to make time to relax, so you, you'd schedule in there. Oh, I'm gonna relax for an hour. So what we come to find was that you know people would ask me all the time, how do you do football in a fraternity and maintain a GPA? I kind of laugh and go like I don't feel stressed at all. I I feel very much in control of my time and I feel like I'm doing everything to the best of my ability. And that was because I, I, could, I could like segregate my mind and say, okay, I know I need to get this studying done today. I need, it's gonna take me two hours. So, but shoot, I've only got two hours to do it. So during those two hours, I was so acutely focused on studying. I was just so effective and efficient with that studying that I was, you know, understand the material way better and and I compare that to um, if I had six hours of free time that day and you told me all right you have six hours of free time Stan you have to study for two hours or you have to two of your hours have to be done to complete this assignment or do this task 
I would have trouble saying, all right, am I gonna, you know, am I gonna go play hoop juice with the guys? Or is he doing that now? Or do I want to study? Because if I, you know, hardly ever would I get it done first. You know, you don't, you generally always procrastinate and let it sit in the, the end. And then you don't do it as well. And it was just, it blew my mind when I, when I figured, figured out that when I set aside time, I kind of almost put pressure on myself to say, I have to get this done in these two hours. I was more effective with it, more focused. And then on the, on the other hand, those other four hours where I was doing something else, I was not thinking about it. I wasn't stressed. And man, I'll tell you what, I napped so effectively in those other four hours. <laughs> Knocked it out of the park. But anyway, I mean, I coach had us do it, and so you know, I. This is the this is the first semester where I can kind of relate to you. It's my tenth semester, and I can relate to you guys because I'm not doing football for the first time. I did football for the first nine, so my my time was so blocked out. It was there was there's not a ton of time management. You know, people always say, "Wow, Stan, you're so good at time management." I'm just kind of like, you know what? They kind of did it for me. And now I have the lightest class load I've ever had, and I have the most free time I've ever had, and I go in there and I take a test and I get like the worst grade on the test I've ever gotten. I'm just like, oh my god, you know, how do you how do you go back to your dad and be like, yeah, I got this on the test, and he'd he look at you like, you have like eight more hours a day to study. And so this the second test came along, I went back to basics and I filled one of these out. See that? That's my girlfriend up there. I, I, I bought that time for her. You see, so. <laughs> like, see, I was down to the nth degree on this, and I walked in there, I got the highest score of the whole class. It's like, oh, that's how you do it. So if you guys are thinking about how you can be a little bit more successful in any kind of studying or time management, give this a try. See how it goes. Now, Kevin told me not to touch too long on time management because you guys are all experts, but I kind of really believe in this. So I thought I'd start with that. Moving on. Okay. Anybody heard this Bible quote before? Yeah? Someone want to interpret it for me? McKinsey? No? Okay. It says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Now, this point I want to make is you, you really never know when an opportunity is going to knock and when you know someone's going to tap you on the shoulder and say you know we think you we think you're the guy we want you and this has happened to me you know time and time again um this today being an example i mean do you think when i went and we went and recruited kevin and when he shook my hand he was thinking man all right let's see what's his what's his flexion of his voice does he, does he discern well? Will he be the catalyst speaker from my senior year in Blue Key? <laughs> was he watching my every move? No, he didn't. No, that's not what he was doing. He was, he was trying to figure out how to you know, turn off the 30 alarms he sets every morning. <laughs> so, he still hasn't figured that out, by the way. But no, Kevin wasn't thinking that. Kevin, Kevin was just being a friend, being a guy. He lived with me for three years, and for one reason or another, when the topic came up, hey, does anyone have any good catalyst speakers? For some reason, he thought of me. Now, I'm really, really humbled that he did, but I want to let you know, guys, everyone is doing that without thinking of it. I mean, they're, obviously, your professors are getting calls from employers saying, hey, Anyone in your class who's a good student that we, we, we could have at our you know, company, that would be good. Obviously, yes. So, you, you know, you, you should be, you know, have quality, quality in your work and class and such. But I need you guys to think of it a little deeper. It goes beyond your professors and to people you don't expect. You know, your peers are watching, your classmates are watching, your fraternity brothers, sorority sisters, everyone. And they are all, without even knowing it, evaluating what kind of person you are? Are you? Is what you do every day does, does does quality associate with your name? Does does timeliness? Does this guy's going to show up? We can count on him or girl. You know, everything you do matters, and 
And there will be opportunities in the future when we're 40, 50, and I'm thinking, man, you know, I, I really need, um, you know, we just got a vacancy at my, my office. I really need somebody. And I'm going to think of, you know, a fraternity brother. Man, he would be great, you know, because, man, he was, he was in charge of homecoming back when we were in college, and he really did a great job, you know. He, he took that float on, and no one wanted to do it, but he did a great job. I mean, you guys wouldn't think of that. You guys would think, man, I got a pump, you know? It's like, <laughs> God. But everything matters. And, and I, I kind of got a taste of this. I'm going to start talking about football a little bit. When I, when I started um, as you know, my, my freshman year, and... You know, by, or by my senior year, I was, I was a captain. Never thought that would happen. I didn't. My dad didn't. I don't think anyone did. Um, you know, I was on when I was on the field. Of the 22 guys, I was objectively the slowest. I mean, and and, and the the coaches knew it. They, they they knew I was the slowest. They they just knew they could trust me because because they they gotten four and a half years of attention to detail for me. My name became synonymous with, you know, quality and trustworthiness and all those things just because I came, I showed up every day on the field and I gave my best in the classroom. I gave them quality work. If I was rehabbing in the training room, I did my best. If I was in the film room, I was focused. I mean, it's amazingly simple how just trying your best at everything puts you above 99% of people. You guys, you guys are all so talented and so smart. And it's amazing how with football, there's these all these unbelievable athletes and scholarship guys, and they just didn't want to try. And I, I sat there going, oh my gosh, like, I shouldn't be on this field. But the only reason I was was because I just decided I'm going to give it my best and do the right thing every day and not accept anything less than that of myself. And if I had been talented, I don't know where it would have gone, but you guys all have talent. You know, you guys can all do so much in whatever you're doing. And so you guys need to take hold of that and make sure that you apply yourself to everything because every little detail matters. And so I'll tell you a little story about how I eventually got to where I, I was with that. Um, <laughs> Does anyone know what the scout team is, by the way? Yes, not. Buell, yes. Yes, scout team. All right, well, in uh, from a cultural perspective, it's the same. Scout team, me and you, you're, we're the ones who uh, emulate what the other team is going to do on Saturday, and then the team, the starter is going to play against us. And um, if, you, if you do well, the coaches yell at you. If you don't do well, the coaches yell at you. So, these are my boys. Did you see Joe Huebner up there? Yeah. And then this is Sam Johnson. Sam Johnson, I'll tell you a story about him. He's a, he really changed my life. And he is now in an acting school in New York. Just long hair, he looks like a goof. But um, <laughs> that's just his attitude. He, he, he goes after anything he wants. He's like, I want that, I'm gonna go after it. He, he felt like acting one day. <laughs> Got to Bradley Cooper's school. It was just like, dude, what? Anyway, he's a walk-on quarterback from Topeka, Kansas. Topeka High. Uh, one of my best friends that I haven't seen in a long time. But you know, one day he walked up to me and he said, "Hey, Stan, I heard this story about Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, uh, he and one of his buddies, they, you know, they they they, they decided one day that they were going to commit." all their free time to football. They weren't going to mess around with all that college stuff. They weren't going to drink. They weren't going to do nothing. They were just going to commit to football. They were going to watch film on the weekends. They were going to, they were kind of going to immerse themselves in it. And I'm listening to them like, wow, that sounds real intense, man. You know? I kind of want to sleep. And he's, he's just, he's like, tell me all about it. He's like, we got to do it. We got to do it, Stan. And I was like, all right, I'll try it. You know, so every day after practice, he and I would, for like half an hour, would just run. I'd run routes, he'd throw at me. 
for like half an hour every day after practice, and we were exhausted because scout team you run, <coughs> if you're a scout team receiver, what they do is they put a card up for you, and all the scout, the scout team guys look at it, and it's got your routes. Just about 80% of the time, you, you go to the outside and you run a go route. So you're just running off. For the other routes, it's just like, gosh, you're running wind sprints all practice. But, um, you know, so we're exhausted, but we, we hold each other accountable and we, we'd always do that. We'd always throw after practice. But, and then when we were watching film, we'd watch film with the other teams. You know, we'd watch, we'd watch uh, Texas and we'd try to look like them. You know, you'd try to look like the quarterback. I'd try to look like the, the wide receiver, whatever number I had that week. And, and it was amazing. We were putting more effort into that, that than most of the starters where we were just trying to like make the team better. And, and I swear, Coach Snyder doesn't sleep because he saw every bit of it. You know, he knew when we were in the film room. He knew when we were on the field. You know, we didn't even know it. And so, 2012, when we're making a, a run at the Big 12 title, or not Big 12, we won that national title, um, we're at TCU, and Curry Section runs a slant in the first quarter, catches it, falls, breaks his collarbone. And I wasn't playing at that point, but I think they brought me on the trip for some reason. And all of a sudden, they said, Stanton, you're in all four special teams, go. It's like, what? You know, we're ten and zero here, trying to trying to go eleven or nine and zero, trying to go ten. Like we're one, we're for a national team, one national TV, and I'm I'm running around this field like, oh my god, you know. <laughs> but I knew what I was doing. I put the work in, and it was my turn. That someone said, "We trust you." They they tapped me on the shoulder, said, "You're in," and and I was ready because I was. I was faithful over very few things. There was no guarantee I was ever going to get a chance to play. There was there was there was no guarantee. I, my expectations coming in as a as a walk on were one, don't get cut. Two, maybe just maybe by my fifth year they say, hey Stan, great job. You can run down on kickoff on senior night, you know. <laughs> and and here I am as a. 18 year old they're, saying, they're not just saying oh get in there for a scrub you they're saying we need you don't screw up and i'm saying well let's see how this goes and sure enough next week same story who watched the baylor game it was a bad night anyway what you might not remember is baylor storm down the field scored touchdown go up seven nothing and there was a kickoff, and they didn't kick it off like normal. They kicked a surprise onside kick right to me, right at me. They said, we'll see how ready you are. <laughs> and here comes this ball. I'm like, oh my god. You know, this, this kickoff team's 10 yards away from me running, about to like knock my head off. And I was like, uh, but I knew what to do. We'd, 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 uh, we'd run that. During practice, fair caught it, caught the ball, they tackle me. All right, no big deal. We got the ball, we scored a touchdown. Seven, seven. Who remembers the final score? It was like 45 to 24 or something. All right, if, if I drop that ball and they take the ball and they go score about 14 nothing, man, that's a big time momentum thing in football. And let's say the game goes just as it would have gone. Who's getting blamed for a lost national championship? This guy. I don't know if I would have ever played another set, but I was ready. And so you guys are never going to know when your chance is to, you know, make make your play in one way or another, whatever facet of life it is, where someone's going to say, oh, we can trust him. And they're going to put all their trust in the world in you. I swear, they trusted me from that play for way more than they should have. I mean, it was like, it was like, if I did make that play, I was going to get like, not only kicked off the team, but they might like hang me or something like that. <laughs> and, and if I make the play, now I'm a captain of the football. Like, I didn't think of that when the ball was in the air. I was just like, all right, I'm supposed to fair catch, and I'm supposed to catch. Didn't think of it. Did it. Because I was ready. If I wasn't ready, I would have freaked out. But I was prepared. And so I stress again, you guys need to do the right thing, do everything, everything matters, everything right. 
And this, this quote is just so, I love it. Because you guys right now are fresh. You might, you might be, you know, doing whatever quest or whatever or not quest. And to be honest, it really doesn't matter. Right now, you have a few things. A few things. Your pledge or your, you know, you name it. But you soon will be required of many things. And who they're going to trust with those big, big things, the things you want to be, you want to be student body president, you want to be, you know, you name it. Those guys are the ones who put the time to do the right thing at all times when they were young, who applied themselves, who worked their butts off, who never stuck their nose off, nose up at a task and said, I'm too good for this, I'm too smart for this. This class sucks. This professor is such a joke. No, they, they said, I gotta find a way to get an A in this class. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have to go to this professor's office hours twice a day. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out a way to do it. You know, those, those are the guys I want. And those are the ones that everyone else is gonna want. So, you know, I, I stress to you this point that everything matters. Probably harped on it a little too long now. All right. I'm a little lost. There's the sheet. So, you know, going back to that point about getting involved, I, I want to kind of throw out a word of caution to all of you who, you know, are really ambitious to get involved, because, I mean, it's great to get involved, but, you know, I've too often seen people who are, they feel like they're obligated to just kind of be in all of those things that I listed, you know, they they need to be an SAB and they need to be an SJ or, or you know, I, I need to be in that and they're in it and they're all in all these things and they just tell you about it and like, guess what, I'm in all these things, you know, because it's really great, you know, like, great, and then you, you, you go talk to somebody, they go, I say, hey, you know so-and-so, they're, 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 in, they're in that too, and they go, oh yeah, they're never around. It's because some people, some people get caught up in just kind of checking the box and saying, "I'm going to be in this, and I'm in it, so I'm, I'm a big deal." It's like, hold on. These organizations are great organizations, and they need great people. You're all going to be in them. But I, I really stress to you guys: you guys need to see these organizations as a platform and not a destination. They, that you need to say, "All right." I have all these great people around me, all these resources to really impact people and, and serve others, not serve your resume, serve others. And I really challenge you to, to take one, two, maybe three of those organizations, dive in, don't just be a member, don't just be somebody who kind of comes to meetings every once in a while, dive in, make a difference. I only have, like two, you could maybe call it three. It's, it's three, maybe it's really two. Two things on my resume, football and Theta Zai. That's all I have, I'm gonna have to train with Theta Zai. I was on a recruitment chair at Theta Zai for three years. I, my, by my senior year, I recruited every single guy under me. It was an incredible experience to have everyone in there be my guys. It was so special and, and and I felt like I had done something real. In football, I could talk to you for hours about it because it was my life. It was a full-time 60-hour-a-week job for four years, four and a half years. And that's all I got, guys. But when I throw my when I throw my resume in front of an employer, they love it. Because they, they can they can they can talk about it with me and they can say we can relate about it with them. It's not surface, none of it's surface. You guys got to get that. You guys got to get one or two or three things on your resume where it's just like, wow, you were an impact player in that organization, not just a member. And so I, I have a <coughs> segment in here about caution you do not get over involved. And, and so I know I might have stepped on some toes when I said that, but I, I want you guys to know, I think that's what I believe. You guys, you guys are all capable of being the president or the VP of all these organizations, but do that. Dive in. 
All right, my last point. I've probably already kept you too long. Um, they asked me to touch on determination despite others' doubts. And that's not very hard for me. Um, I can talk to you all night about this subject. Um, but uh, it's really a subject that I hold close to my heart. So, um, has everyone heard of Coach Snyder's 16 goals? Yeah, no, I don't know. No. Well, there they are. Um, if you haven't, I encourage you to look them up. They're really great. Um, but uh, my senior year, uh, we already know, I told you I was elected captain. Well, we got this opportunity to go to Dallas to uh, be told media day. And it's a go to a hotel, and there's media all across Big 12 country that come, and you essentially just get asked a thousand questions. And there's cheerleaders running around, and mascots running around, and you know, it's, it's a really, really neat deal. Um, I got the great chance to do that, but a question I got over and over again was, you know, what is your favorite of Coach Snyder's 16 goals? And mine is overwhelmingly no self-limitations. And what exactly does that mean? That is something that we need to all ask ourselves. No self-limitations. It's because there is no question that others are going to limit you. They do it every day. They tell you, you know, your mom goes, you know, honey, that, 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 that major is just a little too difficult for you. You know, I don't, I don't want you to, you know, be too busy this semester. Or, you know, you, you can't have a job in school at the same time. That's just, it's just too much. Or, you know, you can't get into Silver Key because you didn't get into Quest. You know, it's, it's just how it is. You know, people are going to limit you. They will. And, and that's just a fact. So if you're caught up in that, you're in the wrong place. You're not going to get anywhere in life. I'm just going to tell you that right now. The, the most difficult struggle with limitations is internal. And I see it so often, is that people say, you know, uh, I, I, you know I, really, I really want to do this, but I just think of an excuse. Yeah, I, I just, I, it's, it's going to be too hard. It's going to be too long. It's going to be whatever. I can't do it. And then they don't. And then ten years from now, they go, you know, man, I wish, I wish I would have done that. Or, or even worse, they go, you know, I could have done that, but you know, it's just too cool or whatever. You know, they just sit there. I have plenty of guys who, I mean, there's, there's plenty of guys who like are in, you know, our fraternity league who, I was out of doubt, could have done or more athletic than me, but they just didn't quite want to give up the, the fraternity drinking life to do it. So, you know, I bet they tell their high school buddies here in 20 years, man, I could play college ball, you know? But they did, and that's just it. You guys are all capable of so much if you just go for it. You know, do you have the guts to put everything you have into something even though the probability of failing to reach everyone else's expectations is almost certain. I mean, that's, that's one of the hardest decisions you know, Avis has to make because the last thing we want to do is be seen as a failure. And, you know, I think I, think I have the most, utmost respect for people who put everything they have into something. Because the only thing, the only thing they have that's, the only thing that matters, is that they gave it their all. It doesn't matter what external expectations are or whatever. You you need to be willing to chase your dream and your passion despite other people's expectations. And you can't live in yourself. I find myself doing it all the time, and I have to you know fight it off. You know, you say. You know, when I was going through the ranks at K-State, it was, you know, oh man, I'm on the field playing special teams. You know, this is so great. I never thought I'd get here. This is, but this is just about as far as the, the road goes, you know. And Coach Snyder's over here saying, no, no, no. We want you to be ready to play receiver. And I'm just thinking to myself, well, this guy's crazy, you know. 
but he refused to let me limit myself. He always wanted us to push, push forward, do more. Never tell yourself, never put a cap on your, yourself because if you take it down to the, the microcosm and say, if I work today as hard as I can, and then tomorrow I work as hard as I can, and the next day I work as hard as I can, and all of a sudden it's been six months and you look up and you go, wow, I'm, I'm beyond where I thought I could ever be. And so I challenge all of you to find something you're passionate about. That's number one. That's, in my opinion, the most difficult part of this whole thing. But find something you're passionate about and then attack it with everything you got. Because there is no better feeling than waking up every day and knowing that you're doing something that has a purpose and knowing that you're pushing your limits and man you're probably going to be exhausted but it's going to be great and I believe that you all have it in you to do something that no one expects of you maybe not even yourself so that is all I have for now so thank you very much for letting me speak to you I hope I can go on to the continues. understand how much rest time was important to me because man I I was so exhausted I love nap I would go into my schedule and I'd try to schedule it out just so I can get a nap in there you know every semester is a big deal it's like if my advisor gave me classes that I didn't get a nap and like I was going straight and then we change the change the schedule but um yeah it's 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 I, I don't know if he, he didn't really give us a set amount of time I was thinking I was just throwing that in there but um I just really stress that if you guys are going to be applying yourself to many things and being super busy, it is so valuable to divide your your time where you are relaxing from the time where you are, are going to apply yourself to a task. And you guys will come to find that you are, your mind kind of clears up and you can do both better. You can relax better and you can be more efficient in the classroom, you know, and instead of this cloud hanging over your head of, Oh man, I got an assignment due here, or I got to study for this test. Instead, you can be like, no, 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 I, I got that done. I knocked that out, or I'm, I'm going to do it here in a little bit. <coughs> That's that. Yeah. Uh, we talked about a lot about self-implementation. What was the biggest um, issue you ever found yourself, and now looking back on how do you feel about it? Yeah. Um. I guess. I guess that that my uh, my story of my expectation of when I was coming in as a freshman was, you know, I am I'm going to hopefully just not get cut. Like that I was I was limiting myself. I I, I was telling myself, you know, this is you are slow and you are white and you are six foot tall. You know, like I was I was just instead of saying what the heck, you know, if if I apply myself as hard as I can wherever I end up is where I end up. And, and that's something that is difficult to do because you risk putting time. You risk time. You know, people say, oh, you got nothing to lose. You know, you, you do have stuff to lose. You have time to lose. I, if I didn't have a good time doing football, I would be miserable because I literally spent like 60 hours a week there. But it was my passion. And you guys, that's why I say it's hard to find a passion because once you do, man, it is incredible how how great it feels. You are you are working 18 hour days, but man, you wake up every day and you're like, man, I wouldn't be doing anything else. That's that's what I'm searching for, you know, moving forward. I, 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 I'm going to the workplace. I want to make sure I find something I'm passionate about so I can do this over again, you know? And so that was probably my biggest limitation. But once I, once I broke through that, I realized it was like, it was like, a, 
I put my head was all of a sudden above the clouds. I was like, oh wow, like there is just so much more, you know? And I really hope each and every one of you can kind of have that epiphany yourselves and say, like, wow, I never thought I would get to this point, but why can't I get here now? And why can't I go farther? And that's when that's when I started really realizing that there was a, such a direct correlation between how much time I put into this thing and what I was going to get out of it. And and so many times people cloud that correlation with self-limitation, self-doubt. They say, you know, I, I never really can get there. Uh, they tell me I can, if I work hard enough, but no, I'm not going to waste my time. You know, that's that's such a sad limitation and something that I I wish more people would kind of roll the dice and say, you know what, I don't care what I don't care what the odds are. I'm going to give this my best because it's my passion. So, yeah. yeah. So you talked about um, dividing out your time and um, things like that, but then when you had things going on, like maybe family things came up or with recruitment, if you're working with other people and scheduling, how did you deal with unexpected things that came up or like, oh, well, these things only take like five minutes each, but I can't necessarily do it block or like how do you work around those things and still make your schedule work? Um, to be honest, I find I found that there is a lot of ways to do two things at once. Like like if I go to the bathroom like I'm studying, like or if I'm like <laughs> serious guys, like I I was craving my time in there. Like you but you know fam family issues are something else. Um, obviously when you have to you gotta drop everything and deal with that but um, in the spring is when recruitment was going on, our schedule was a little lighter. So how I did recruitment was there's a lot of on the road stuff for first. So I wasn't able to kind of do that during the week. So how it worked out was we would put like if there was eleven days in spring break, we'd probably go to like a lunch and a dinner every day. We'd be on the road. We we drove like twenty five hundred miles one year. But that's that's what we do all that. But um it's a good question. Uh you, You'll be surprised when you, you schedule out your day or whatever, and you're really trying to do a lot of things at once. Like you find time to do a lot of stuff. A lot of times it's easy to sleep, you know, but that kind of goes into how bad you want kind of thing. Anyone else? Yeah. If you give everything, if you give something, if you uh, put your all into something, but then you still don't succeed in your life. Looking for something, you know, what do I do now? How would you suggest handling that? Yeah, um, so yeah, it's it, that's a great question because um, how I kind of operate was once once I broke through that limitation we were talking about, you'd set you'd set goals and say, man, I I'm going to put in all this work and I really want to get here, and then you reach it, and then all right, time to set the goal. I see you keep raising this bar. And, and eventually, you know, I got to my senior year and I was beating myself up because I wanted to be a receiver. I wanted to be on the beat. I wanted to get in the rotation. I wanted I wanted to be one of those five guys that got out there on, you know, uh, a game-to-game -game basis. And I wasn't doing it. And, and, and you know, for one reason or another, I never like to say it, but I think my speed finally caught up to me, kind of thing. So, or my lack of speed. Um, but I was beating myself. I was telling myself I failed, you know. And and it's it's so interesting because you go back to that limitation I first set on myself. If you say, Stan, if you were a high school senior and I said, look, man, here's the deal. You give me four years of your life, and I give you captain of Kansas State football. You gonna take it? Well, heck yeah, you know, I'd say, heck yeah, let's do that. I'd, I'd be the most successful, that'd be the best successful story I've ever seen. I'd be so excited. And, and now here I am, and I'm going, yeah, but I didn't, I was never a receiver. You know, beat myself up. And so it's important to kind of take a step back and say, look back and go, you know what? The fact that I gave my all, I really gave my all. To honest, I can look myself in the mirror and say, yeah, you couldn't have done anything else. That's all I ever need. That's all I ever need is to to know that there's not an ounce of regret in my head of saying you should have done this different. 
no, I, I got a fair shake, and I tried my very hardest. And at the time, I was beating myself up, but now I, I gotta, I gotta look back and say, you know what? You did a good job, and and you know, it's if, if like if I was a, if I was a, a dad and my kid went through something like this, and he gave his all, and then you know he just. It didn't work out for him quite as well as I did. If he gave his all, that's all I could. I'd be the proudest guy in the world. And and so you guys need to have pride in yourself and saying, yes, I gave my all. That is that is better than 99% of the world. And because people are scared to do it. And so I would I would just stress to uh, you know try to find a way to know that you did your best and, and know that that's enough. And I know that's not easy to do. And I. I don't know if I answered your question, but um, I, that's that's so, somewhat how I took what you asked. Me, so. Anybody else? Yeah. Time for one more, probably. Yeah. So, what are some things that you're doing now that are helping you find out what your new passion is now that football is kind of like, well, not over, but you're kind of moving on yes. to the next phase of your life? I'm praying a lot. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> See, that's a great question. Um, I've I just got shoulder surgery, and so I've been rehabbing that. I just got out of the sling, so I have not put a ton of time into that, and that is something that I want to do. I we could talk forever about this, but um, yeah, it, I, it's it's a tough deal. I think that is the hardest thing in the world is finding your passion. I'm so lucky that when I was, you know. Eight years old, I got to run around K State's field and say, "Man, I want to do this," you know. And and then I got to take this all the way. I got to carry that baton all the way now. And and so I know, guys, it's not easy. It's not easy to find your passion. I'm lucky to have that, but I want you guys to know that if you find it, attack it, and don't let anyone tell you different. And and that's what that's what I kind of I had. And and so if you find a passion for me, please call. I'm really dying for one right now. <laughs> I'm miserable, to be honest. I get to sleep like four hours a day if I want. It's just boring, and I wish I was doing football again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's if that answers your question. I, um, if that's my last question, I got some things for you. I want you guys to, uh, if you guys get the chance, go to my Twitter and this pin tweet. <laughs> this pin tweet is a story that I wrote. It's a blog kind of thing about my journey. Um, if you guys have any interest in it. It's right there. It's the first tweet. It's pinned. And uh, also, here's my phone number. If you ever need anything, seriously, I'll be with you individually. Let me know. Love to talk to you. And like I said before, you guys are family. And um, so I really want to, if I can do anything in, in the case of self-development, text me. Uh, call me. Anything. I'll come in to get coffee. Um, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And uh, I guess that's it. Thank you.